I believe the films are organic mm -hmm. and they do take on a life of their own. And it has happened to me so many times. You think you know the movie you're making, but it tells you what it wants to be. And I can think of no better example, for instance, when I began to make Glory and we you know, had, at the studio's insistence, written, oh gosh, and shot two reels almost of young Matthew Broderick, young Robert Goldshaw and the Brooke That's Farm. 20 minutes in old speak. Yeah, that's, thank you. <laughs> the minute that we got into the tent and I saw Andre and Jimmy and Denzel and Morgan and I realized there was the beating heart of the movie that, yes, was sort of clear to me, but so abundantly clear on screen that I immediately began to write more for them, diminish what was happening for Matthew, because it was they were in rapture and that was the story. Mm -hmm. And it happened because we were looking at it as it was being created. And that's the same thing as going into a scene and saying, okay, this is my intention and this is what I've written, but then there's what the camera sees. And the camera is a Buddha. The camera is impartial. It's this chemical thing that it's, it, 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 it's electronic. It, it has no sense of your anxiety or your uh, ambitions or your, hope, or, or yeah. your intentions. Yeah. It only sees what's there. And only if you can breathe and see as it sees and see what is life happening before you can you hope to actually change it. So I think a difference in between us when we started was I was much more visually oriented and Ed was much more verbally oriented. And what I discovered, for instance, was that when I would set up a shot, I would sit there and go, well, this wasn't what was in my head. You know, you couldn't find the right location. Somehow I had a picture in my mind. The lens is wrong. You know, and what I discovered was that the thing that was in my head was in my head for a reason. And the more that I fought to make the image match the thing that was in my head, the better off I was going to be. And in the beginning, I wouldn't do that. The beginning, I would say, oh, well, I mean, this is our location. That's the camera. It's like, well, that's what the cinematographer says. I thought you were about says. to say the exact opposite thing. <laughs> yeah, I do. thought you were about to say, I realized that I had it for a reason, and that was more important than the image that I was trying to put out there. No, I, that the I, reason. I, no, but it actually goes to both. Okay. In other words, but the point is, like, <laughs> the point is that there's a language of cinema and there are things embedded in the images you have in your head that are important. And the key is to come to understand what's important about what was in your head and what's not important. And over the years I've learned, mm -hmm. I don't have to match the color, I don't have to, you know, there are a lot of things I don't have to match, mm -hmm. but I have to figure out why did I see it that way? Why did I see it as a long shot from down here? Or why did I see it from the person's point of view coming in the room? That all of that stuff has this inchoate meaning inside you that you have to respect and understand and come to understand what's important and what's not important. So the only way I differ from it is that I think when you're directing, you use every force in your power to make the thing be what you want it to be, okay? Then when you're editing, you give all that shit up and you say, I'm the vessel of this thing and I have to serve what this thing is. You can no longer control it in the same way. But as a director, you have to try to control it. You have to understand what it is you're trying to impose. But I would back it thing. up. I would back it up, actually, and talk about the writing this process. This is every day for us. I yeah, yeah, but <laughs> the process by which I believe the good writer goes through is that very thing, whether he's going to direct it or not, that his willingness to actually understand the plasticity of the moment, the, the reality of those people in that room, psychologically, what they're going through, the beats, the, re, the authenticity of the movements that you're asking them to make or the transitions emotionally is the exact same process. And any screenwriter who thinks that somehow he should be um, immune right. or, or somehow spared the, the rigor of that process is not really a screenwriter. 